So the last talk of this session uh, is on the quantum decoding problem. Um, this is work by Andre Chelu and Jean-Pierre Tillich. And Jean-Pierre will give the talk. OK, so before I'm going to explain the problem I'm interested in, so it's a quantum decoding problem, I will talk about a more, a more, a much more known actually problem, which is a classical decoding problem. And then I will explain actually how a classical decoding problem is related to a quantum decoding problem and why we were interested in this and what were the results. So classical decoding problem, you start with, let's say, a finite field over Q elements, call it FQ. You take vectors of length N over FQ, this forms a vector space. And now you choose a subspace here of the whole space, dimension N, and this is a linear code you're interested to decode. Okay, this is the first choice. And then you pick up a random element in this subspace here, C, and you add some arrow E to it, and this E is chosen according to some probability distribution, which basically fa favors elements of rather some, which are rather small, small according to some metric. I'm going to talk about later on, but for right now, you can think of that E is rather small. And you give away the noisy code word, which is the sum C plus E. And now you are asked to find C, just from the knowledge of C plus E and the knowledge of the code. Okay, this is a classical decoding problem. It turns out that even for very simple cases, where basically here the linear code is of dimension n over two, let's say, and choose a rather natural error distribution, this problem is extremely hard. Uh, basically, uh, for natural choices here of error distribution, the, the best algorithm for solving it classically are exponential here in N. And also the best quantum algorithms for doing this are exponential. And actually most of code-based crypto and most of lattice-based crypto, because lattice-based crypto, this is also the LWE problem here. It's chosen yes, just a discrete Gaussian here for E and it's extremely hard. And actually all this code-based and lattice-based crypto is based on the difficulty of this problem. Okay, now let's look at a related problem which could be viewed in some sense as a quantum version of this problem. So instead of giving the C plus E, what I'm going to do, I look at, for a given C, I look at all possible noisy version of this C, or the C plus E, and take a quantum superposition here over all the possible noise here, value here. And I take the amplitude here in such a way, if I measure this state, I get the C plus E exactly with the right probability here. So of course, this means actually that the quantum problem here is not harder than the classical problem just because I can measure the states I have and solve it classically. But this quantum problem might be much easier. And now you may wonder, why do I care about this problem? Well, it turns out that some authors played this game uh, two years ago, and they look at a very specific error distribution. And basically, they found an algorithm a quantum algorithm for solving this problem in polynomial time. And then by using Gregor's deduction, basically they were able to solve what is called the cis problem in a very, very specific region. So what is the cis problem? Uh, basically, it's this. You choose again a linear code, and you choose some metric. In, in that case, they choose the infinite metric here. I'm going to be interested here in the Hamming metric. Hamming metric is just actually the, the distance between two vectors x and y is just the number of coordinates in which x and y they differ. Um, so 
they were able actually by solving this problem in this decoding problem in polynomial time to find to be able to find low weight code words in this code here according to the infinite metric. I'm interested in right now in the humming metric and basically this problem is also very hard. It's, well, not in the whole regime. So, for instance, if you take a relative distance in the Hamming metric, which is Q minus 1 over Q, where Q is the size of the alphabet, the problem is easy. How do you do this? You choose just a random element here in this, and you expect actually what a fraction 1 over Q of the coordinates, which are equal to 0. So you find a relative weight of Q minus 1 over Q. Easy. Can you do better? Yes, you can use the fact that the code space actually is a linear space. So you may just want to find code words which are equal to zero at certain position. How many positions can you choose? Basically, the, number, the dimension of the space. And this explains actually here the point that we have here, where right? basically you, you choose as many positions as the dimension allows you to do. And you have a very simple classical algorithm for doing this, and it turns out if you want to go beyond this, there is no uh, uh, polynomial time R, which is known. Actually, all the algorithms for doing be, go beyond this are exponential again. And then there is a part here where basically you can do you can do nothing. Why well, you can do nothing? Just because there are no code words of this uh, relative weight which are in this region here. So it's a classical problem, which is also very hard. And also, crypto is based on the difficulty of this problem. And you may try to understand if these two problems are related. Actually, there are three problems right now, because there's still this quantum decoding problem. And actually, there is a very nice reading one of the, the, the problem here of finding low weight code words to a problem of classical decoding, which is due to rigor. And it's a quantum reduction. It's kind of, it's a very funny reduction because the first problem basically has only one solution. And for the second problem, basically we are in a regime where there is an exponential number of solutions. So it's kind of non-intuitive, but you are able actually to get a reduction from one problem to the other. Uh, and the only known reduction right now actually goes through this quantum reduction. So how do you reduce one problem to the other? Suppose that you have an algorithm here for solving the classical decoding problem. And so what you do here, you first set up here this superposition over all possible code words in your code and all possible errors you are interested in actually in decoding. And then you add this register to this one here and get this. And now if you have something like this, if you are able to solve the decode, classical decoding problem, it means that for, if you know C plus E, you can find back C. But if you can find back C, you can subtract C to, to, the, to this thing and get a zero here. And if you look a little bit at the state you just created, uh, actually it's this state which is here. So it's this quantum superposition here. Forget about the zero here because you can tensor it out. And you have this. And this state has some periodicity condition. You, if you look at what's going on actually at um, here for the uh, y value here, uh, you can, it's the same amplitude as you have uh, at, uh, at uh, the vector y plus c. So this, the, because just uh, you have a subspace here. So you have some periodicity condition. And so it's not, uh, you can expect that you take a quantum Fourier transform of this, there will be something going on. Precisely what's going on actually here, you get a state which is only whose support is only support in the dual code. What is the dual code is a set of vectors which are orthogonal to all elements here of the previous code. So you get a nice superposition here of dual code words. And somehow, if here now, if you go back to Regev's algorithm, what you expect here, you expect if you measure something like this, if this F here is, support, uh, is supported on small weight code or a small weight here, 
you also probably expect this uh, quantum Fourier transform also to be supported in some set, small, small set. And so basically you have a way actually of sample small weight cold wars. So if you can solve a classical decoding problem, you can do uh, this. But unfortunately, there is no good way of solving it classically. Always, as I said, uh, the old army for doing classically has exponential um, uh, complexity. But now if you look really what we have at this point here, actually you are, we are missing something here. If you, you can rewrite this as a superposition over all possible cold words, and the science C here is just the sum of f of e c plus e. It's precisely the one what we have for the quantum decoding problem. And if you expect actually that the quantum decoding problem is easier, well, solve the quantum decoding problem instead. And so basically you have a way here through uh, this reduction to construct small weight code word by solving the quantum decoding problem. Great. So basically, here, this is what we are going to do. Um, so just to look at a, an example here, where you get something uh, already non-trivial, look at what the, the, the alphabet is binary. And now look at the error model, where basically I choose a, an, an error one in one bit with probability p. So this binary symmetric channel somehow uh, encoding theory. And so I get this probability distribution here on the error where here this here, <clears throat> E here is the weight, the having weight of E. And if you look at the Fourier transform of this, it can be checked that you get exactly something which is related to the initial probability distribution, but which are peak orthogonal, which has some uh, other here, um, other expression, which is this one. So in some sense, you transform this binary distribution to another binary distribution. So basically, if this binary distribution is actually has small weights, let's say you output typically uh, uh, guys of weight P times N, this one is going to output guys of weight P of not here times N. So if you get exactly what I said. If you are able to solve this the quantum decoding problem, you are going to output uh, guys of weight P orthogonal times N in the dual, which is probably good. If you do this classically here, you can just show that the decoding problem here of, of uh, if I want to decode R of a weight Pn here, I can find actually in the dual vectors of, uh, of this weight. But this is not an efficient way of doing this because the classical decoding problem, as I said, is a, typically a, there is no good way actually of solving it right now. It would be a terrific result. This uh, something will be changed in the near future. But now, can you do it? Can you do better quantumly by solving a quantum decoding problem? Well, quantum decoding problem, there will be a regime actually of parameters for which you can solve it in polynomial time. And it is easy to see actually why this works. Because what do you have right now? I tell you, if you like, let's say the code word is something like this, it's easy to see that you have at the other side, this quantum superposition actually is a tensor product either of psi zero when you have a zero here or a psi one here where if you have a one here. So you have this tensor product of psi zero and psi one. These two states are not orthogonal, but what you can do, you can use actually state discrimination to find if psi, if it's psi zero, psi one. If you do this, well, there is some, sometimes you, can, you have an inclusive answer, but you can use optimal state discrimination and using the fact that basically the probability of discriminating the, the state is actually this probability here, which is related actually to the P orthogonal what we saw before, which is here. You get by doing this, looking at the whole state, 
performing this um, uh, unambiguous state discrimination to each position, you get about two p per 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 perpendicular here times n bits of c here. And if this number of bits is more than the dimension of the code, of course, you, you can solve and you get the whole code one. And you can solve the problem, easy, just solving a linear system. So this problem basically can be solved quantum in polynomial time as long as this condition is met. Great. So what do we have here uh, at the end of the day? If you look at the, uh, the classical decoding problem, it's either always hard, so we don't have it's our own, any exponential algorithm for doing this, in, or in tractable in GCG, but basically there are no solutions. Here now, if you look at what's going on, there is a whole regime of parameters where the problem is actually easy, can be solved in polynomial time. Here, right now, we don't know it's, um, it's at least there is an exponential time algorithm for doing this just by actually measuring the state and solving it classically, because you can say have an exponential time algorithm for solving a classical decoding problem. And there is a, this regime here where we actually, right now, uh, what, what I said here, we don't know, but I'm now I'm going to explain that you can go beyond actually this. You can actually solve this quantum decoding problem way beyond this information theoretic limit that you had here. So how do you do this? Uh, I don't know how to perform uh, the optimal measurement telling me from this psi of C, the C, but what I could do is perform a pretty good measurement. If I believe that there will, a, there will be a threshold behavior, meaning actually that the probability that it succeeds drops from almost one to almost zero, the pretty good measurement uh, actually is going to give me exactly the point of cutoff here. Just because there is this relationship between the optimal measurement here, distinguishing the states with uh, a pretty good measurement. Okay, there are some technical difficulties here, but you can really understand what's going on for a random linear code for a pretty good, for a pretty good measurement here. And it turns out that there is, okay, the, a, a whole regime of parameters, which is here, which goes beyond what you can do classically. Which here, you can just not solve the problem. You can go this actually problem, you can go beyond quantumly here and go up to this regime. I see it's still hard here. We don't know how to do efficiently this uh, pretty good measurement in this case, but still actually this problem is solvable beyond this. Basically, actually the, uh, with um, quantum state that you have, you have more information somehow to solve a problem. Can they view it this way? And uh, now you can say, does it imply something? Well, yes and no. Um, so if you want to use now Gregor's reduction in what I say, um, you have to be a little bit careful uh, because, as I said, there are some technical difficulties in showing that Gregor's reduction really works because there is some error in doing, you know, the decoding, blah, blah, blah. You have really to be very careful about what you do. But okay, uh, there is a way to, to do this and prove actually that with this unambiguous state discrimination procedure, you can use regular result and be, get basically something in the dual, as I said, and with pretty good measurement, you have also to be careful because in this case, actually, in the regime when the pretty good measurement works and beyond the ending unambiguous state discrimination here, you get almost always zero if you measure it directly. So you have to be a little bit careful what you are doing, but okay, some technical difficulties, but uh, you can be solved. And basically uh, the picture that we get here is the following one. We can, uh, as I said, uh, we can solve with unambiguous state discrimination here in polynomial time, the quantum decoding problem here. This is with a pretty good measurement here. And beyond this, we are sure we cannot solve a problem. 
Now, if you do this, uh, use this uh, way of solving the, the quantum decoding problem in Greg of the direction, you get a code words in the dual code. And what are the weights that you get? You get we uh, weights actually in this uh, regime here by uh, actually by using this ambiguous state discrimination here. These guys actually are obtained by using uh, this P, uh, PGM here. And the unfortunate thing here, if you look at this picture, it's precisely the picture I gave you before for the best classical algorithm. This regime, actually, the classical algorithm, there's also a classical algorithm for doing exactly the same thing. Uh, but now, we can go into a regime here where actually, even actually by using this with Greg of this reduction here uh, and the best decoding algorithm, you cannot reach, you cannot go up to here. And why is this point important? Because this point is the point where is the minimum co uh, weight, uh, the minimum distance of the code. So it's actually the, the minimum weight that you can expect actually to have. Beyond this, there are just no code words available anymore. So really here, this thing actually what we get here, we have potential algorithm for finding minimum weight code, outputting minimum code words in a, a linear code, which is a very hard problem. Right now, it's still exponential, but it's not clear what we have, you yeah? uh, So basically, what this thing does, uh, I think, really, uh, it gives a much more satisfactory quantum reduction in Rager's, basically, approach. Uh, because now, with this approach, we can really find, actually, we can expect to find minimum weight code words in our linear code which is not something we could do before, first of all. Now, even if we don't have right now a, a quantum algorithm for solving this hard problem, uh, I mean, which is a polynomial time, this approach might give actually quantum algorithm which have a better complexity that we, that we just have right now. So this is a completely new approach. It can be, uh, can be actually interesting uh, to, to look at. Uh, so what I explained right now for the Hamming distribution actually generalized to all product uh, distributions, just not but Bernoulli, you can do, uh, and basically you can find things, about, you, you can use discrete uh, Gaussian distribution, you can put this in it, and also find something which is related to the, the things that I mentioned here, and this is just a paper which is in write-up with André Chaillou and uh, Agathe Blanc, which is here. But, Sorry. Thank you for that talk. Questions? Hi. Um, do you have any intuition or explanation for why you recover the classical algorithm? <laughs> yeah, well, um, no good explanation right now because at some point, you know, we, we really obtained this uh, with um, uh, just uh, this inner product of these two states actually in the, the square root. Well, there is a way if you look at what's going on for unambiguous, optimal unambiguous state discrimination, uh, somehow this P orthogonal appears in a natural way actually. In a, so the uh, only thing that I, in any explanation that I have right now, it's uh, the P orthogonal actually appears in a, the same way as it appears actually in the classical way, but it's not a good explanation. Um, it was not clear at the beginning, but it would give the same thing, really. So I still don't have, you know, a very good answer why actually I could transform the classical algorithm into a quantum algorithm and do the same thing. Some, something looks the same because I also use, in both cases, I use um, a sub-linear system somehow for doing this. So there is definitely a relationship. Uh, but a very good explanation, I don't have it right Do you now. think it's fundamental? I, I would better have a good explanation, yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's fundamental, but I would, 
I would prefer having a good explanation. And then do you mind if I ask another? Um, so uh, this shortest integer solution, mm -hmm. do you believe this is an exponential speed up? Like you said, there's a regime where there's a... I'm still, I haven't tried a lot actually on what they do. It's, uh, maybe, 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 uh, maybe. And um, uh, basically they're using the ROG algorithm. And the first, if you're looking at ROG algorithm uh, at degree one is basically what we do and they use it at a higher degree. And they really tweak actually the R distribution so that it fits the algorithm. Um, yeah, I think my, yeah. If I had to bet, probably, probably an exponential speed up. Yeah, for yeah, 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 probably, so, like probably. different from Shor's yeah, algorithm. I really think that I really think that the quantum decoding problem is easier, and that you could do something that you can never do classically. Look, what we are really using here, somehow, uh, when you do this unambiguous state distribution, what we do is sometimes we perform a unitary and then we measure. And you rotate somehow the error distribution. And this is something that you cannot do classically. So is, is, um, how do they solve the quantum decoding problem in the paper where they solve the shortest uh, they, uh, they use also, they, uh, they, um, they, um, they also use some kind of unambiguous state discrimination, but it's not optimal, first of all. Uh, you can gain a little bit what they do just by using something optimal, first of all. This is definitely something easy to do just using something optimal. And then uh, they they get as many bits as possible. They are in a regime, actually, where the rate is not constant. So they can allow, actually, to get a better algorithm for solving it, and this is our G algorithm. So it's so similar to the thing that... Yeah, yeah similar. It's similar. Somehow it's similar. It's not the same error probability, and they still do it slightly different, but some of things are the same. What is new here is the PGM, and what really the PGM, what you can do at the, the best algorithm for doing it, you can, you can go much beyond, actually, what we do with NABQS. So there is something to, probably to gain. I don't know how much, uh, but that might be something to gain. Yeah. Thanks. Um, that was very interesting. So my understanding is that uh, there's this result you're probably familiar with uh, from Yamakawa and Zandri that's uh, a, you know about getting this sort of uh, exponential speed up relative to, to random oracles. But yeah. in that work, it's related to this. Actually, it's related to yeah. regular projection somehow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Decoding sort of arises in a very similar yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, exactly. And so I was wondering if you thought about um, applying the uh, USD type approach to uh, the kind of uncomputation step that arises there and whether, you know, that would sort of give any advantages over what they do in their work. Ah, no, I haven't. Good, it's a good, yeah, I haven't. I haven't. Good suggestion. Funny suggestion. I knew the paper that I haven't talked about this. Good suggestion. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.